yeah, yeah. We came up, we came up with this. I, we came up with this um, concept. The the six R's. The six R's. Right. The six R's of rock and roll. <laughs> um, one of them was recordings. Okay, so we we got some recordings done. One of them revi reviews, not in any particular order. Reviews whereby you try to get your music out to people that will speak favourably about it, but independently as well. Um, repertoire, meaning if you, if you, if covers are important, then you need to learn them, but you need to be writing as well. Um, radio, trying to get the music out to the radio. So that means, for example, the BBC introducing is the fantastic first step in that respect. And raves. And raves. Raves is the fifth one. Raves isn't really a rave, but it's a gig, but it begins with R, right. whereas G doesn't. But that means performance. And the last one, which is the most important, the sixth one, is readies. How much is going to cost you, and how much you're going to earn from it. And if if you just if every time you sit down to think about where it's going, you just have a, each one of those R's at the top of a piece of paper or part way down a piece of paper, and make a few notes on each one. If you touch each one of these and link them all all in together, then you're not you're not going to go too far wrong. You shouldn't. Have, the, the band is where it's got really serious, and where the serious ambitions have developed so so this Christina never had serious ambitions for herself because the band just happened so quickly after she'd started doing little gigs around so so that a lot of these questions are best answered in the context of the band I say to them every band has great gigs the great gigs are the easy ones there is not a band around that hasn't had good gigs and plenty of them the real measure of you as a band, and I think this goes for performers, is how you react when things haven't gone well. When your voice is wrong, where you've forgotten the words, where the venue's horrible, where the people are, are rude or they just don't react to you well. How do you react? That's, that's the measure of you as a performer. And if you can handle the situation, then despite the fact that you might think that the event has been a failure in actual fact it's been a success because don't forget you're in a business and the measure of a business isn't how well the business consistently works the measure of a business or any human activity is how well they react when something goes wrong you know how do you react when something goes wrong it's no good burying your head and writing it off to to uh, just a bad day at the office. Maybe that's what you do after the event. But you've got to you've got to be able to to handle the situation, and that's what's your that's I think that's what you're going to be measured on. I think, and that's quite possibly going to be the decisive factor. How did you handle that? How well prepared were you? If you didn't have a spare guitar waiting, why didn't you have a spare guitar waiting? If you had a bit of a technical problem, and you needed to get some gravity and momentum back in the set quickly because you, you dropped off through no fault of your own how skillful were you in in getting it back, back on back on track if there weren't very many people in the audience yeah six is an awful crowd for a solo soloist but but equally two or three hundred in a venue built for two thousand would be bad as well for you in a year or two's time when you're further up that tra trajectory so if you can handle six people in a venue when you're a soloist aspiring to play to 50 or 60 then the signs are that you'll be able to do that when you've got 200 in a venue which has undersold tickets was hoping for 2000 you, you are constantly honing your skills and, and how you cope with adversity is really important. And if you don't experience some adversity, you'll never know how good you are. And it's just you are the measure of how well you respond in a crisis. And can you do it? If everything goes to pot uh, and you show no strength of character in those situations, then, then it's good that it's happened because you know the time is to give up. If you can't handle it when things aren't going well, well, pack up and stop wasting everybody's time. That's what I would say. In the band, for example, if they have an off day in the band, they're really down about it. They might feel that they only operated at 50%. And I've sat in the front of, our, of their band's minibus because I drive the bus quite long distances with them and, you know, they think they've had a bad gig 
and I say to them, look, okay, it's good that you are your own worst critic. That's a great starting point because there's no good coming off the stage thinking you've had a great gig and, and you haven't. But do be aware that your 50% is when you think you've operated at 50 percent you really probably operated at about 85 or 90 percent and you're such a good band that your 85 or 90 percent is somebody else's 110 percent anyway so that depends on how good the band is and, and they're a good band the hair band they've all decided that this is what they want to do for their living so none of them are earning much money they're just doing um part-time jobs here there rotating and revolving around their music so they've got more time on their hands than somebody that was say doing a 40 hour a week job having to travel to and from work mm -hmm. they've got more time on their on their hands so I say to them you've got to put that time to good use if each one of you puts in 10 hours of work in addition to the actual music work in addition mm -hmm. to playing practicing and traveling to and from gigs if each one of you can find 10 hours in a week then if I chip in 10 hours as well, that's 50 hours. So that's one and a half, one and a quarter people. Now, if you, you have to trust me on this, I say to them, but if you were to cost that, say, and say, well, that's, you've got a young graduate or A-level qualified person working in the back office of a London record label, probably their overhead, total wrapped up cost, with national insurance and everything, it's going to be close to £35,000 a year with a share of the rent and the manager's time and so forth. So 50 hours a week, you can easily see that is worth £50,000 a year to you. So, so every week that you allow to go by without spending that 10 hours on getting gigs, getting your music, on the, the six R's, yeah. you've wasted £1,000. If collectively we did nothing between today and this day next week, then we've actually wasted a thousand pounds. If on the other hand, for the last year, we had all spent that time on the band, then we would have contributed the effect of 50,000 pounds worth of back office investment in a record label to the development of your careers. And you'd be getting reviews in Art Rocker and rock sound, you'd be being played on Kerrang and Daniel P. Carter on Radio 1 and you'd be getting, you'd probably have a booking agent and you'd be getting support gigs at the O2 in Islington and as a band we're probably halfway there, you know, on the one hand we've maybe wasted £20,000 worth at that time but we've exploited £30,000 so we've manufactured £30,000 worth of back office support from our own efforts. And that's the way to look at it. But with all these things though, YouTube, Reverb Nation, Facebook and so forth, the pace of change of the software and the technology itself is so fast that there's nobody who can teach you how to do it. You might as well just get in there and do it yourself. Don't don't mess around reading books or articles. You'd be far nobody ever learned to ride a bike by reading the instructions. So just do it the same way you learn to read a bike. And just Try out, see what works, see what doesn't work, and chit chat with people that have got similar interests, such as yourself, and just ex exchange tips and so forth. And the great thing is, of course, um, it's so easy to slip into, as a parent, it's so easy to slip into fuddy duddy mode, especially if you haven't been involved running your kid's football team or running you, helping your kid's music or somehow involved with their friends it's so easy and to to write off all young people as ne'er-do-wells but they're not and so what sort of words of advice would you give to sort of say in summary of all that to somebody who's going okay i'm going to start this journey with my kids i'm going to see if i can help them what what's the sort of i would i would say three things first, first of all um especially if your kids are still in their teens, because Christina didn't start doing this to you, she was in her 20s. Um, don't push so hard that you turn them off. Don't try to live your life vicariously through your kids, because that's just so wrong. You know, Be very wary of that. Um, if things are going well and there's a genuine prospect of having sizable success, then you have to understand the huge amount of work that, 
that is involved. And if you appreciate that, then of course that increases your chances of success because it's almost a self, it can be, I think, self-selecting. There might be a huge number of talented artists out there, but actually 90% of them simply won't work hard enough. So that takes that, that means 90% of them that are out there remove themselves from the competition right from day one because they're not going to work hard enough. And so if you bear those two things in mind, then just go for it and enjoy it. That's the third thing. Just enjoy it with an open mind and a, you know, and a spirit of fun, a spirit of fun and adventure.